All right, good day everybody, Steve Przbrowski here. Welcome to episode 73 of Reach for the Firefighter Badge. Episode 73 is gonna discuss something different than what we've been talking about for a while, but it's gonna be part two of what does a firefighter actually do, just so you get a better idea of what you're getting yourself into in more ways than one. So let's get going. As a reminder, my two websites have a lot of great free information in there to help you be the best that you can be in your pursuit of the badge. Also available on my website, two of the three books I've had published, actually all of them are available on the website, but these are the two entry level books that can help you also be the best that you can be in addition to the free information that I have on the website. So way back when in episode number four, we discussed what does a firefighter actually do? So I gave over the basics of what a firefighter does. And if you think back or forgot what I talked about, it was pretty much firefighters don't fight fire and save lives. That's like a small percentage of what we do, really small percentage. But what else do we do? So let's continue with some more actual details of the day in the life of a typical firefighter around the country. Now, some of this stuff you may be on, what the hell is he getting into right now? Or what? Yeah, a firefighter is not just a firefighter. Obviously, firefighters run medical calls. We get that. But let's take a look at all the other trades. Because if you were to ask a firefighter, what other trades do you actually get involved with on a typical day? You'd be amazed. So. Let's get going. It's all about fighting fires, saving lives. Nah, as I mentioned, fighting fires, probably 5% or less of what we do. Breaking news, shocker. On any given day, a firefighter could find themselves serving in other roles, such as number one plumber. And you're like, huh, I'm not a licensed contractor or a plumber. No, you're not. But sometimes when people call 911, you'd be amazed what they call 911 for. We're usually their first line of defense. If they don't know what to do, they'll call us. Especially in the middle of the night, their water heater breaks. Water's gushing out, damaging their hardwood floors or carpet or whatever. Yeah, before they call the plumber for over, double overtime or triple overtime at midnight, they're going to call us to see if we can at least stop the damage. And that's what we're there for is hopefully shut the water off, get our water vacuums out, try to at least maybe soak up any water, um, prevent further damage, and then, of course, recommend to them, hey, we recommend that you go find a um, reputable licensed plumber. Well, who do you recommend? We don't recommend anybody. That's not our job. Our job is just encourage you to find somebody else to fully solve the problem. But at least we need to know basic plumbing skills. Also, basic electrical skills. You're like, what? Yeah, basic electrician skills. Not to, not to take the job of an electrician or a plumber, but we're here to do basic stuff. We do many different things. Carpenter. At the bare minimum, you should be able to pound a nail into a two by four. That is something that we used to do in our fire academy. It was actually pretty interesting. We didn't do it to make fun of people. We did it to test the ability and see where people were at. And I remember our court academy coordinator, he put out some two by fours, throw some nails and some hammers down and say, all right, hammer a couple nails in there. And some did it pretty good. Some others are like looking at the hammer and going, huh? WTF, and of course WTF does not stand for where's the fire or well-trained firefighters in this case. It, and again, we're not here to make fun of people. We're here to go, okay, we need to provide additional mechanical ability training, which we usually do with a lot of new recruits. So you should be able to at least, at least do that. So if you can't pick the appropriate hammer, pound a nail into a, say a piece of wood or a two by four, have someone show you how to do that. Social worker especially in today's world where it's very scary um, and beyond shocking and just very sad that we have such a big behavioral health, mental health issue across the country. Um, and I mean, it, it's a sad state of affairs right now, but think about it. When 911 is called, who's usually the first line of defense, law enforcement and fire departments. So it's not uncommon for a lot of our calls to really just be someone to, Someone needs their hand held. And I don't mean that sarcastically, but literally we may need someone to hold someone's hand or to comfort them or to guide them in the right direction. And you go, I didn't sign up for this stuff. Yeah, you did sign up for this stuff. You signed up to be a civil servant, to help others, to give back, to serve your community. And these are all the things you may be doing, whether you like it or not. Other roles, psychologist. Yep, no, you're not a licensed psychologist. You're not a licensed psychiatrist, but again, just like a social worker, you're gonna be involved in certain things. And here's the hard part, we can't train you to do everything. There is, I mean, it would take years to train you to do everything. So hopefully between a crew of two, three, four people that we have on duty, between all the collective minds and years of experience in some capacity, hopefully y'all can solve the problems that are necessary. And again, our goal is not to make the problem worse, but to at least stabilize it and hopefully then 
connect the individual with the next best source to help them get the help they need. Vehicle detailer, you're like, huh? Yeah, think about it. Who do you think maintains the fire engines, the trucks, the fire apparatus, the battalion chief's vehicle? It's usually us. We're the ones that usually wipe them down at the end of the day, give them a nice wash, clean them up as necessary. Yep, we don't take them to the car wash. We do them ourselves, typically. So knowing how to detail vehicles is a critical, critical task and role. Also waxing vehicles, um, also vehicle repair person. Now most departments have their own mechanics and a lot of the times mechanics frown on firefighters getting too in depth, um, not taking over their jobs, but I think sometimes our mechanics are like, why'd you guys touch it? Just call us. Again, they're not there to, they're not worried about job security. I think mechanics in the fire department have some of the best job security out there because things are always breaking. It's the cost doing business, unfortunately, but at least for basic repairs, we may be called upon to do that. And depending on your department and depending on the budget and the staffing, you may have to do a lot more repair than say some departments that have regular mechanics. So basic things may be your responsibility, changing the oil, you know, whatever. Other, all the roles, maid, maid. Guess who cleans the firehouses? Most fire departments don't have maids. The maids are us. You know, if there's three of us on duty at engine nine today on the B shift, guess who's going to be cleaning the station? Yes, that's us. We're the maids. So, especially you as a probationary firefighter at the lowest rank, you're going to be the one that probably does the lion's share of cleaning the bathrooms. Yes, cleaning the toilets. You're like, oh, I didn't sign up for this. Yes, you did. So, basic maid skills 101 and that's not meant derogatory, are critical. So you better know how to do these things because it's your firehouse. You live there a third of the time. You better keep it clean and maintain it. Other roles, lawyer. Lawyer, yeah. Every fire department, every kitchen table is a great bonding place. Team building, team bonding. And within every fire department and every crew, there's usually at least one firehouse attorney or firehouse lawyer. I say that sarcastically and jokingly, but it seems to be true that there's always someone out there that's not a light, they, they're not licensed attorneys to practice, but they of course think they know what they're talking about. So be wary of the lawyers, but hey, sometimes they provide good entertainment. Teacher, guess what? We're public educators, we're gonna be teaching others. You on your first day as a firefighter could be in front of 50 school kids giving a station tour, or going to a school, giving a tour of the apparatus, giving a tour of the equipment. You gotta understand how to do those things. Um, We'll try to train you some of those things, but we can't teach you everything. So basic instructional skills 101 is gonna go a long way because you're gonna be teaching almost every day. And especially as a newly hired firefighter, one of the best ways to know that you, you um, comprehend and understand the skills you're supposed to be signed off on is to have you teach a class. You know, just because you can don an SCBA once doesn't mean you've got the skill dialed in. I mean, it takes hundreds if not thousands of practicing opportunities to master a skill. But if you're going to get it signed off, one of a lot of what off, what a lot of officers do is say, okay, don't just don the SCBA, yeah, don it, but teach me how to don it. So you teach your crew how to do it, and that's how you learn. Also, chef slash cook, as I've mentioned before, you got to have a few basic meals in your repertoire. You can't rely on mom or dad or whoever to cook your meal. Um, you got to have some basic meals, so you can't go wrong with some basic meals and nothing too expensive because sometimes us firefighters myself included, have been known to be cheap. So don't have steak and lobster every night. You got to have a balance of everything, but you got to have some meals out there that different people can like. Be able to have maybe a few varieties. You can't go wrong maybe with a pasta dish, maybe a vegetarian dish, um, maybe something Mexican, basics, lunch, breakfast, dinner. If you don't know, now it's time to learn. One of our, I remember hearing the story about a year ago, one of our probationary firefighters, the tradition in a lot of departments is when you're off probation, you cook a nice big dinner. Well, apparently this individual was told, hey, you're cooking dinner and everything else. And he's like, no problem. And the captain found it a little weird about 11 o'clock in the morning because uh, do we need to go to the store to get, get all the food for tonight's dinner? No, no, got it covered. So they, are, they each have their own lunches, which sometimes happen and sometimes crews eat, them, eat by themselves, but together at lunch, they just bring in maybe leftovers of their own food. Well, even by about five o'clock, the captain's going, um, six o'clock dinner, right? And the probie's like, yep, yeah, got it, got it, Cap. Just sitting there, chilling, relaxing. Captain's getting a little worried about, this dude's supposed to provide us dinner. Well, guess what happens at about 5.55? 
Dude's mom showed up apparently at the kitchen with this awesome spread of, hi, I'm so-and-so's mom. I'm bringing dinner for you guys tonight. Apparently the dinner was awesome. Of course, mom's an awesome cook. Well, the captain got pissed off at the firefighter of like, dude, you're supposed to cook the meal. And firefighter, I mean, hey, he goes, in his defense, he goes, no, he goes, no, you said I had to make, I had to have dinner for the t for tonight. I've got dinner prepared. It. He didn't necessarily say I had to cook it or how it got here, and that could have been Uber Eats or some other Grubhub or something else. And and I, I know the captain was pissed because he wanted to ensure that the firefighter had basic skills. But I'm like, hey, you got to give the guy credit. That's pretty creative. I mean, I know it's pretty weak to have your mom come down, and you can't do that all the time because you're going to get your ass handed to you just with harass. Not harassment, but uh, everyone giving you a hard time of like you had to have mommy cook for you. You don't try not to do that too often, if at all. Let alone even use Uber Eats or Grubhub or something similar. Know some meals. Can't go wrong with that. So in the next episode, number four, step four, seventy-four, we're going to discuss some more roles a firefighter may find themselves on in any given day while on duty. So hopefully you found at least one of these tips so far to be valuable and something that you'll have yet, and maybe something you've yet to hear. Don't forget, all eyes are on you during probation, and this is where you're supposed to be at your best. So be at your best. So as always, thank you very much for the gift of your time. Here's my contact info. I look forward to hopefully uh, having you reach out at some point to see if I can assist you in some capacity. But until the next episode, y'all take care, be safe, and we'll see you soon.